Hello and welcome to Big Deal and wish you all a fabulous new year. Let's today take stock of the lessons from the year gone by and what it really means for the top Deal Street trends for this particular year. Let me welcome on the show Cyril Shroff and Prashant Mehra to discuss exactly this. Welcome gentlemen to CNBC TV 18 and wish you both a very, very happy new year and a year full of deal making as well. Uh, Cyril Shroff, let's begin by your view on how we have really started in 2023. Most of uh, the macro headwinds still remain with us and that has given a lot of opportunity and also disrupted many business models in the last year. Lessons from that last year and how are you seeing the big factors which are going to really impact uh, the deal street for this year? So thanks for that, uh, Nisha, and uh, Happy New Year to you as well. Uh, so the, many of the major themes of 2022 will flow into 2023 as well. So globally, of course, there is a lot of uncertainty arising out of the Ukraine war, uh, inflation, uh, possibility of recession in three major regions of the world, including US, Europe, and, uh, and China. So those are the global headwinds. But equally, we saw in 2022 that India remained a little bit of an oasis uh, in all of this and was able to buck uh, some of the global trends. So I think that phenomenon will continue to play out uh, in India as well. And there are many reasons uh, for this as well. So we saw last year on Deal Street, it was a very active uh, year for m &E, uh, which came in all shapes and sizes, whether it was large internal uh, restructurings uh, or uh, sort of really acquiring new businesses, consolidation, uh, so on and so forth. So, and we'll talk about it uh, a bit more uh, later in the show as well. But I think 2023 is also going to continue to be quite a busy year for uh, m and activity. Similar trends will continue. There would be sector-related nuances, uh, which we will talk about. So I don't expect uh, 2023 to be any worse than 2022. It will continue to be an active year and it can even surpass our expectations depending upon how some of the major macro trends and it's basically the macro trends I think which will drive uh, a lot of this activity including uh, geopolitics I think will be probably the biggest theme of all. That's right. Uh, but Cyril Shroff, one uh, more question on what you said. Can you pinpoint one important change or a factor which happened in 2022, which will have a lasting impact on the deal street, especially in this particular year? Like COVID was one which led to a lot of digital uh, revolution. Anything from 2022 which is going to be making a marked difference? So I would say uh, two things. I think at least speaking from an Indian point of view, yeah. the reduction of the twin balance sheet problem. Uh, I think the NPA problem uh, in, the, in the banking system, the NPA situation is amongst its lowest in the last 10 years. And corporate balance sheets have been largely uh, deleveraged and uh, corporates are kind of hungry for more. I think because of this and because of the opportunities, I think CEO confidence will, will remain high. Uh, and major corporates are in a very acquisitive uh, acquisitive mode as well. So this would be, I mean, there are many factors. Uh, this is the one I think is going to play an important role in, uh, in Deal Street. Right. So major corporates are in very acquisitive mode. This would be my biggest takeaway from whatever you have mentioned, uh, Cyril Shroff. So Prashant Mehra, that should give us a lot of confidence on the deal street for this particular year. You are the author of a detailed report, which we are revealing now, the findings of that on the deal street in the last year and the future outlook for this particular year. $127 billion worth of deals and in volumes, it ramped up, it went up by 47%, but in terms of value, in value it was higher, but in volumes it was lower. And I would say it was one particular merger which really pushed up the number. How would you ascertain uh, the last year and do you think that this year will be a beat of the last year? Um. Jeff, thank you for having me and happy new year to both of you. Uh, I think as far as 2022 is concerned, it's been a year full of revelations. 
we can conveniently break the year down into H1 and H2, as we'd like to call it in the report. And if you look at H1, it's been a record number of years, whichever record number of years, whichever way you look at it, whether it's value or volume, 80% of the work on deals really happened in the H1 of this year, whether you look at it from a MA perspective or a private equity perspective. The last six months have been more of a wait and watch cross sectors, across various mediums of deal making, whether it's IPO, whether it is M&A, private equity, or cross border. Uh, so, so clearly the last six months have been extremely sub. I think now uh, we will probably see the trend reversing where we will see about, according to me, five elements of new deal making emerging in the first six months of 2023. Uh, a few themes that I believe will be very strong. First is consolidation. In balance sheets uh, are strong. Uh, corporates have been conserving cash for the last six months, and now they will go in for those consolidations. Could be actually forward integration, backward integration, even left and right integration for that matter. Private equities will focus on uh, funding these consolidations as well, because that's always looked at as an alternate means of financing. Uh, distressed asset m &A should be something to watch out for, both from a global as well as India uh, perspective. I think cross-border, which has been extremely subdued in the last year or so, will, will again come back. Uh, and I think finally, from a sector perspective, while tech-enabled sector um, will continue to be uh, the most popular deal-making sector. But I think a new sector may also emerge with increased consciousness, especially post-COVID, which is ESG. Uh, I think a bunch of all these factors with India continuing to demonstrate extremely strong macroeconomic factors will um, bring up a pleasant 2023. And as Mr. Shroff also mentioned, uh, 2023 should possibly be much higher. We may see less number of as in lower valuations, but in terms of volume is concerned, I think we'll probably surpass 2022 as well. Right. Uh, so very, very interesting, <clears throat> those uh, trends that you mentioned, actually, uh, Prashant. Cyril Shroff, um, you know, Prashant mentioned one interesting bit, new emergence of a sector, which the market always looks out for and the first movers get that advantage. And I know a lot of pockets have been working on the ESG theme. It came to a little bit of a slow lane because of the various macro headwinds that we were faced with in uh, the last year. How do you see this developing? And I also want to raise it in the context of sustainability because uh, the government's green, green hydrogen mission is also now getting revealed and that will also open up many possibilities like uh, some of the corporates did in solar and other forms of renewable energy in the last few years. So ESG uh, was a big theme even in 2022 and some of the largest deals had uh, underlying them uh, ESG considerations. And I think that will get stronger and more obvious uh, in 2023. So what it would mean, for example, in the renewable space or broadly in sort of more sustainable energy spaces li uh, linked with uh, the energy transition. So I think you will see a lot of volume uh, in uh, in that again it's broadly linked with uh, with ESG but even in a non-obvious way in many sectors for example in real estate uh, there will be ESG considerations in terms of uh, you know who wants to sell and who wants to buy so it, there will be obvious or non-obvious ESG considerations both on the buy and the sell side uh, it is now mainstream in terms of uh, corporate strategy and thinking, so it will manifest itself. So there will be certain obvious types like renewable energy, and I think it will, in any event it will underlie a lot of deal-making activity, including a lot of foreign investment, which will be uh, you know, in furtherance of uh, expanding their uh, sustainability goals. You'll see that coming in as well. Right, and a lot of sustainability-driven funds have also emerged uh, in the last uh, couple of years as well. Prashant Mehra, you know, this particular time is also going to be very challenging for companies which do not have deep pockets because a lot of foreign money has become expensive, so they'll be very choiced in picking their investment destination. 
private equity also feels that we will do cherry picking because now valuations are going through their own right now, uh, you know, the process uh, where there is enough volatility for the dust to settle. And on the other hand, loans are getting more expensive. What are the forms of uh, fundraising activity are you anticipating for this particular year? And also, is IPO appetite there? As far as IPO appetite is concerned, I think uh, we will need to wait and watch it. Uh, wait and watch a bit. I think IPO activity should hopefully pick up in the next quarter, uh, or possibly towards the uh, financial year end for India. Uh, as far as means of funding is concerned, you know, uh, debt cost is increasing, but at the same time, the gap between debt and equity is is reducing. So from that perspective, as I mentioned, for consolidations, private equity will be looked at as a very important element of uh, funding since acquisition financing is not allowed in this country. Yes. Uh, foreign money should also play. I mean, you know, whenever there is a recession, it frankly means that there is a recession for a particular economy, but there is money always available. I think a lot of money will get diverted towards India, uh, and that should become the means of financing for a lot of companies, uh, again, in, in the form of consolidation. Hmm. Uh, private equities, uh, IPOs, as well as cross-border uh, foreign money coming into India will probably be the, the three biggest pets. And as I mentioned earlier, since distressed m &E, is also yes. something that will become attractive. Um, funds which specifically fund such transactions uh, will also find a lot of appetite. Right. Um, uh, Cyril Shroff, you've done so much work on the distress side, and Prashant mentioned that. How soon before we see the resurgence and importance of IBC come back, you, in your view, especially with corporate finance becoming a little bit of a constraint because of interest rate rising? So we're already seeing this. Uh, IBC, I think, is, is slowly coming back. Uh, uh, there are a variety of reasons. One is on the kind of buy side, uh, there is increased appetite. And there are more targets that are being uh, that are coming up uh, for resolution as well. So it's an existing theme. What we need to watch out for and look forward to actually is how the process uh, gets streamlined and uh, uh, becomes more efficient. The biggest problem with uh, IBC-related uh, resolution, including buyouts, has been the sheer inefficiency of the process. So, but, I, but I'm seeing the early signs of uh, very conscious thinking on uh, restructuring of the process, uh, simplification, and the policymakers are working, working hard at it. So in a nutshell, I think the IBC theme is very much back. All right, so IBC to watch out for, but there are many, many more themes that are going to develop on the deal street for the year 2023. We'll pick on those uh, when we return after a very short break on Big Deal. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching Big Deal and we are discussing the key top deal trends that are going to emerge in the year 2023. Now, Cyril Shroff, two important takeaways from the uh, previous segment from you was one, that large corporates are acquisitive in nature. That's a very big and good news for this year. That keeps the m and stream ringing and the big deals happen in that particular space. And on the other hand, you said that distressed asset sale is very much a theme developing more in a more pronounced manner in this particular year. Uh, if we really look at uh, the top trends according to you on m &A and which sectors are going to be the most active ones, what will be your view? So if I were to make a forecast on the sectors, uh, I think technology will continue to be a, a, a big part. Uh, real estate, healthcare, uh, and I think uh, parts of infrastructure as well uh, will continue to be active because there are both targets as well as buyers, uh, as well as financing is available. So we will see, uh, I think these four sectors are likely to be the most active. Uh, and sometimes, occasionally, uh, you know, big FMCG deal also uh, can very much uh, surprise you. Right, FMCG deal. I'll take that as one of the key uh, takeaways from you, Cyril Shroff. 
and we can probably guess uh, which ones that could be. But Prashant Mehra, which are your top sector picks where you are uh, doing most amount of BD and uh, FMCG pitching? is, is yes. such a broad thing. Yes. Uh, it now covers uh, e-commerce and you know those sectors as well. So yes. given how technology as well as the consumer markets are behaving, uh, we will see some of that, uh, some of those theme emerge as well. I think right. India has this opportunity of scale. Yes, yes. No, I'll come uh, to uh, especially the digital space with you a little later. But Prashant, your top picks, where are you spending most amount of time in pitches and business development this year? See, I, as far as technology is concerned, I wouldn't really categorize it as startup, e-commerce, IT, IT, ES, uh, no, I would just categorize it generally calling tech enabled, anything which is tech enabled. Uh, any part of manufacturing today which is tech enabled, I would classify that as the, uh, technology. So that I agree with Mr. Shroff, that would probably be my first pick as well. We will see most part of activity concentrated there. I think the second bit is really infrastructure. I would like to see a lot of activity. Uh, the government has demonstrated its skin in the game. Uh, has invested tremendously in infrastructure, and I think we need to start seeing some private activity uh, there as well. Uh, the third one, which I would believe is emerging out of that India opportunity globally, uh, economy is not doing so well, is manufacturing, where I uh, believe there will be substantial activity, uh, where also we will see, again, a lot of consolidation in that space. So those would be my top three picks. Right. Uh, manufacturing is a very good news, Prashant. And you know, uh, this particular space is capital intensive, so large, and those kind of mergers and acquisitions have always created more stir in the market than any other sector. We saw a large cement deal. We have in the past seen many, uh, you know, metal and mining uh, deals as well in the similar space and of very high value. So I'm looking forward to that. But Cyril Shroff, how is the investor mindset, the private equity? mindset as well as a sovereign wealth fund mindset when it comes to India and especially when they are organizing their budget for deploying in various countries right now, how are you seeing India fair and in which sectors are they more keen? So if you look at, look at it from a global point of view, from out to in, India looks very attractive because of uh, geopolitics, uh, including specifically the way uh, you know, China's path is uh, emerging post-pandemic. So things have moved now from, you know, China plus one into almost uh, the ABC strategy anywhere but China uh, framework in terms of the mindsets of uh, of many, uh, you know, global firms. Hmm. Uh, so that is one aspect. Hmm. The second aspect, I think, is the, fa the, the currency. Uh, whilst the, the uh, rupee has depreciated against the dollar, uh, it has not depreciated to the same extent as uh, many other currencies as well. So Indian Indian targets for an inbound acquisition have become uh, definitely more attractive. Uh, I also think we're underestimating the outbound theme. So last August, uh, there were some important changes made to the ODI regime. Now it's just been a quarter, so it's too early to judge. But if I look at the year ahead, 2023, I think the ODI uh, ODI theme is also going to be kind of relevant uh, as well. But uh, coming back to your original question, from a foreign investor's point of view, uh, I think India is looking as one of the most attractive targets on the planet. Okay, and one important takeaway you gave for me to also read up and uh, go deeper into is ODI-led transactions and outbound transactions that we have to look into. Of course, Biocon Beatrice was one such uh, large transaction which was outbound in nature and after a very long time, we saw a large transaction by an Indian corporate in that space. Now, uh, just want to understand one uh, aspect, Cyril Shroff, any challenges uh, that you see on the deal street right now, which needs to be really looked into very carefully and addressed immediately for the deal street to have a smoother play? So in the uh, sort of Indian public markets, uh, the perception of acquirers is that the open offer process is still very cumbersome uh, and it needs streamlining and there is a committee that is looking at it. Hmm. So public market acquisitions continue to be challenging. Yes. Uh, as far as the broader kind of regulatory framework, 
uh, India, it's still seen as difficult to get deals done in just in terms of the red tape uh, and you know the risks, the market risks that are involved. But none of that actually stops deal activity. I think people find a way to uh, navigate through it and get it done. So, but it for if if we can make things simpler, easier, and more transparent, you will see more activity. I don't right. see financing as a problem just now. There's lots of money sloshing yes. around. Yes. Yes. Uh, CEO confidence is high, so there are enough buyers, mm. and there are enough sellers as well. So the biggest challenge, I think, is kind of the ease of doing business or ease of doing M&A challenge. So ease of deal making has been something we have been discussing for a very long time and you have to give it to the regulators time and again they have eased certain processes and we hope to see more of that. So open offer process one, uh, we know that uh, Hexaware was delisted and uh, you know because uh, the sale was looking uh, very impossible uh, with it being a listed entity and many such cases are there and on the other hand also we have seen one merger and acquisition in, in the media space over a year and it needs a lot of patience to really consummate a transaction. Prashant Mehra, final uh, word. I want your view on the startup ecosystem. Funding winter is here. Do you see a huge amount of consolidation over there? Has activity already started? Yes, for sure. I think activity has already started. Uh, we will see um, a number of closures in the startup space and you know startups are also going the consolidation route. Um, uh, scalability is a big factor for investors. Investors are happy to put in money but they also need to see scalability and consolidation is a great way to demonstrate scalability overnight. Uh, having said that, I think the, uh, the lens of any investor as far as a startup is concerned will yes. not be just limited to a revenue model but a business model. The difference right. between the two is the startup finally needs to make money. You can't keep just burning money. Uh, and I think uh, once once that lens is there, we will probably see a lot of unicorns actually being recognized as such in the startup space. All that's, right. a, that's a key the theme I would probably uh, see in startups. But also, uh, also uh, now what we are discussing yeah. is a little more evolved, Prashant, uh, for one particular IPO aspirant, that even if you're making profits, but it's a very small amount of profit and then you're asking for a higher valuation. So that, uh, you know, sense will also seep into the market. And of course, depending on market volatility, the appetite will also grow whether or not for any startup IPOs to really come to the market. But many takeaways and... Uh, many, many insights on the Deal Street for 2023. Thank you so much, Cyril Shroff and Prashant Mehra for joining us on this edition of Big Deal. And uh, I have many, many points uh, to really jot down and dig deeper on, so which will keep me very busy on the Deal Street for this year as well. Thank you so much for tuning in.